Welcome to this OST2 course about TPM key generation using the Wolf TPM software stack. So far, we have used the TPM2 tools to interact with the TPM. If we want to create our own TPM application, we would need a TPM software stack, or for short, a TSS. The TSS provides for us easy to use developer API. The developer API is much easier than the TPM common transmission interface or for short TCTI. Usually we have a TPM driver that takes care of the TCTI for us. And last but not least, we have the physical layer. If you're running an operating system, there is already a driver that takes care of the physical layer. Here is the typical sequence. Your application talks to the TSS. The TSS in turn talks to the TPM driver and the TPM driver using probably the OS drivers communicates through the physical layer all the way to the TPM. The response of the TPM walks through in the opposite direction back to your application. Here is an example how the TPM2 to create tool works under Linux to talk to a physical TPM. The TPM2 to create tool uses the SAPI API of the TPM2 TSS stack. Stack in turn talks to the Linux TPM driver. The command is then sent over the physical layer using the Linux drivers for SPI or I2C and reaches the TPM. When the TPM is ready, it sends back a response that is handled first by the Linux driver and then passed to the stack. The stack, once done on marshalling the result, returns the data to us. Here is another example how we talk to a physical TPM in a different situation when we have an embedded system and bare metal firmware. In this example, we would be using the Wolf TPM stack. The Wolf TPM stack has wrapper API, which makes it much easier than sending multiple TPM commands in a row. By calling the Wolf TPM underscore create key wrapper API, we're going to generate a new child key. This command is processed through the API of the Wolf TPM stack and it reaches a custom user IO callback function. This IO callback function can call an already existing other firmware call that we have, or it can implement the complete solution to allow us to talk through the physical layer to the TPM chip. The communication, the response of the TPM walks in the opposite direction. For our lab environment, we use Docker and a TPM simulator. Because we use a simulator, there is no need of a TPM driver and there is no physical layer. The TPM simulator talks to us using TCP socket. For Wolf TPM, we just specify it as a build option. Once built, when we issue the TPM to create command and we address Wolf TPM, it needs it has to send it over a TCP socket to talk to the TPM simulator. When the command is processed, it is sent back over TCP to Wolf TPM and the result is provided to us. Similar thing happens with the TPM2 TSS. The difference is that we need to specify as an environment variable that we're going to use the simulator and at which port. To save us time, we do this when we run our Docker. We need to use a TPM software stack, or for short, TSS. The TSS API is the most developer-friendly way to create applications that work together with the TPM. There are two main cases when you look at today's landscape of TSS available. The most popular are all open source, and only one complies with the TCG specification, the TPM2 TSS. Every other stack usually has one API mapping directly to the comments, and a second API, rich API, usually some kind of wrappers or a layer on top of the one-to-one -one mapping where we can execute direct actions with the TPM. Rather than sending multiple comments, we just send one API call to our TSS of choice. Let's take a closer look. The Go TPM originally did not have one-to-one -one mapping API to the TPM comments. It was only a mild layer on top that served as a rich API. Recently, this was added. So now, all the other stacks that do not comply with the TCG specification follow a similar pattern. We have one-to-one -one mapping, and the API itself sounds very familiar 
as if we are reading the TCG specification, let's say, is it a TPM to create key? Is it a TPM to get random or TPM to start out session? What has proven over time is that the rich API is preferred for professionals and enthusiasts. People just like using an API that allows direct execution of a whole procedure, of whole operation, rather than nitpicking all of the commands. I personally prefer to this day the SAPI, the system API of the TPM2 TSS when it comes to using that stack. But it is undoubtedly that the SAPI and FAPI are the preferred choice for developers today. And this is true also for the other stacks, the IBM stack, the GoTPM stack, the WolfTPM stack. They all share the same design pattern. There is the one-to-one -one mapping to TPM commands API that is there in case we need more control, more granularity, more access to options, flags, and parameters. But each of these stacks has its own rich API to perform whole operations, sometimes even in sequence. The Wolf TPM calls this rich API wrappers. Instead of having to do five or six TPM commands, we just issue one Wolf TPM API that takes care of the rest. This is a very similar approach to the SAPI and especially the FAPI. FAPI comes from feature API. Now, the distinction between SAPI and FAPI is that FAPI is a very focused set of functions we can do. And on the other hand, SAPI still gives us some control and allows us to do almost everything, where FAPI does not match the complete functionality that we can do with the TPM. It performs the most common operations, the most needed. In summary, when choosing a TPM stack, the API would not be your first choice. The most important aspect would be where I'm going to use this library in what environment. Would that be Microsoft Windows? Would that be Linux? Would that be a bare metal system or some kind of other embedded system? Is that embedded system going to be a real-time operating system or Linux-based device? Based on that, I would recommend to choose the stack and then you can be more precise in, for example, if you like more the wrappers or you prefer more the way FAPI operates. Why I chose Wolf TPM for this course? My background is industrial automation. The systems I know are running real-time operating systems. They have hard time meanings. Sometimes they have really bare metal firmware. And even nowadays, from time to time, I still have to use assembly. So from that point of view, I like the Wolf TPM stack because it does not require dynamic memory. There's no heap needed. And this is major, major importance for embedded systems and safety from my perspective. That being said, if you're running a Linux-based embedded system, you are fairly well uh, equipped to run the TPM2 TSS with the SAPI and FAPI or and to even use the Go TPM stack. What I also like is providing the IO communication with the TPM. Now, when we have these embedded systems in these industrial devices, usually we need to create our own custom IO channels because of the hardware. The communication interfaces operate differently on the various hardware platforms. So often we write the communication drivers ourselves and linking that to the stack can be difficult. In Wolf TPM's case, I like the fact this is done with a single callback function. And we'll take a closer look in a moment. I like the wrapper API because it is simple and yet gives me all the rich functionality I need for digital signing, for key creation with various options. So I have simplicity. At the same time, I have optionality. And it is not the same as using the direct API and using TPM commands one by one, but I like the balance. I like the trade-off there. A fairly good amount of examples is available in the source code of the stack itself. Naturally, it's located in the examples folder. And you can find very interesting cases like a TOS connection backed with TPM. You can find different demos of uh, ceiling, key generation, and so on and so on. Now, the examples have grown over time to the point where they're quite complex. They support so many options and so many variants that 
what we would do here does not translate and match. Uh, we would do a very fixed, focused application using the DPM. We want to generate an RSA key, that's what we're going to do. There will be no options, no arguments, and so on. So looking at the examples code at times could be a bit overwhelming until you get what you want and until you find out, hey, how this works. But they're there and they support a lot of the TPM functionality. So they're a really good source of information. I just think that for starters, we would like to have this monolithic structure for our examples. And this is how we build the exercises for this part of the course. Last but not least, there is a good API menu that is built using Doxygen and uh, you can find it online at this link showed on the slide.